Good morning, CSL. Good morning. And good morning, all you people watching on live stream. I can see what you're doing right now, so you better stop it. <laughs> no, I just want to tell you that if you're watching live stream and you haven't been to CSL in a while, every week there is new people that are coming that haven't been here for about a year. It's safe to come home, so please join us in the room. We would love to see you. At Center for Spiritual Living, you know that we have seven core values, which we highlight to you every single week. Our core values are love and healing and oneness and abundance and spiritual growth and service and diversity. And the core value that we are highlighting today is service. You know, Center for Spiritual Living Fort Lauderdale was closed for five weeks when the pandemic hit, and then we were allowed to reopen. During that first Sunday that we reopened, uh, there was hardly anybody here, but there were 300 people watching online and live stream. Most people in Florida and certainly in the world were panicked with fear. They were concerned about their well-being, and certainly so in the midst of a pandemic. But we knew here at CSL that we can't close you know, you don't close a hospital because people are coming that are sick. And you can't close a Center for Spiritual Living just because people are in fear. In fact, you need to remain open because this is a house of faith, a house of faith. There were a few strong people who operate in faith that stayed on in the midst of everybody else who left. They are volunteers. They give their time and their service to CSL. They helped us readjust our service so that we could promote it live stream. They helped us lower the cameras and figure out how to speak to a camera and an audience in the same place. I want to point these people out to you today because they gave and they gave and they gave and they showed up in service when everybody else couldn't or didn't. They are our sound crew and our AV people in the booth, Douglas Drew and Michael Blank. When we were trying to figure out how to put people in a room and keep them safe, then uh, we didn't really know how to do that, but we relied upon the professional service of somebody who does that for a living, actually keeps facilities safe. And he came and he showed us how to do it. He showed us how to set up the room. He's been here every Sunday since. He's in charge of our security, Michael Johnson. You know him because you see him as a presider on Sunday mornings, but Greg Kozlowski is the kind of guy that just shows up and does the right thing, even though it's, it's, it's scary for other people to do. He helped us through this pandemic. He helped us in all kinds of different ways. And I want to give you a special shout out, Greg. Thank you for your time and your service to CSL. You know, CSL happens to be very, very blessed with super talented people. We attract that. We attract diversity and creativity. We have an Emmy award-winning filmmaker here at CSL, and he showed us how to create a service that would be broadcast. He created the intros and the outros. He's a brilliant man, a brilliant filmmaker, and his name is George Schellinger. Thank you so much for your time and your talent at CSL. Service is our core value of the day. CSL is part of a global organization with over 500 centers worldwide. We are a spiritual community that honors all faiths and all religions, and that's because we know there's no wrong way to worship, whether you're lighting a candle, repeating a mantra, or offering a prayer. We respect and we honor any way that draws us each closer to spirit, so we celebrate the diversity in religious practices with our ceremony this morning that we call the flames of faith. The candles lit for the Tao to honor the universal path of harmony, the natural way. The candles lit for the shamanic traditions honoring the belief and practices of all indigenous peoples. The candles lit for Hinduism to honor the spiritual path of devotion 
and the variety of religious icons and deities. The candle is lit for Judaism to honor the path of sacred law. The candle is lit for Buddhism to honor the Four Noble Truths and the Way of Compassion. The candle is lit for Christianity to honor the Christ, the Christ consciousness that lives in all of us. The candle is lit for Islam to honor the path of peaceful submission to the will of God. The candle is lit for the universalistic religion of Baha'i to honor the path of unity. The candle is lit for our own faith, which we call New Thought, to honor the metaphysical path and the practice of universal spiritual principles. And the final candle is lit for peace and for the peaceful acceptance of all faiths and spiritual practices worldwide. In 1949, a groundbreaking novel written by George Orwell outlining the horrible conditions of a dystopian society went to print. And in it, he described a society that was in a state of perpetual war against an enemy that posed a constant threat, much like we faced in America after 9-11. And under the guise of keeping everybody safe, the government kept constant watch through surveillance cameras that were located in public places. The people were ruled by this big brother government issuing controlled propaganda through a government agency called the Ministry of Truth. The novel was, of course, the infamous 1984. Now, unfortunately, all of this safety against a perceived threat came at a high price, the price of individual freedoms. So everyone was expected to get in line, to follow the protocol, to conform to whatever the general law is from this government. The thought police were everywhere to ensure total conformity, and giant TV screens were spread throughout the society to constantly reinforce this propaganda. And the masses, driven by fear, did just as they were told. It was a frightening scenario showing just how easily people are manipulated through fear and how quickly they are to give up their personal freedoms for promises of safety. Now, without realizing what was going on, they'd all been sort of hypnotized into accepting the status quo like mindless sheep and given over control of their thought and their entire lives under this mass consciousness of fear. Very scary stuff, that novel, 1984, and very covert. To highlight this sheep mentality in the actual year of 1984, one company launched the most brilliant marketing strategy ever known in the history of American business. One that would propel that company into being the first trillion dollar company. It was launched in a 60 second ad on the one day of the year when tens of millions of people were watching TV. Super Bowl Sunday. Here's the ad. It's absolutely brilliant. No wonder Apple captured the market of the cultural creatives who were looking for an alternative to the boring PCs that everybody else was using in the world. 
Now, we like to think of ourselves as nonconformists, don't we? We want to be the girl that's running in the ad, the one who dares to break the mold, not the mindless drones that are following the status quo. But when it comes to religion, most of the world is like them, not her. We've been indoctrinated in our religions by using the same tool that they use to keep people in line, fear. We are told to lie low in the presence of God and to live in fear of its wrath because he is, after all, like that big brother mentality, all-powerful, all-knowing, everywhere and watching everything. This is the image of a God that my childhood religion sold me, the one that everybody believed in. Growing up in a small town in Kansas, there was no one around me nor anyone I knew that believed anything different. God is a man who lives somewhere up there in the sky, in heaven, and he's watching you, and he's watching everything you do and apparently writing everything down. And when it's all over, when your time here on earth is finished, then you go before God, and he alone determines your eternal fate. Will you be with him in heaven, or will you be cast into the pit of hell and burn forever? Now, I was told in my childhood religion that if I were just to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior, then I could get to heaven and I wouldn't be cast into hell. Those were the only two choices I was given, reward for a life of Christian morality as they defined it, or a life of eternal damnation. And this indoctrination comes early as it does with all religions. Get them young when their minds can be easily molded. Teach them about a God who punishes some and rewards others so they themselves will behave. Tell them the Bible stories from the ancient days when their God was so angry that he flooded the entire planet just to rid himself of these horrible human beings that he had created, instill fear in their minds so that you can get them to conform to doctrine. And as a little boy, my young impressionable mind bought it all hook, line, and sinker. And it had me lying awake at night in desperate fear, fear that God would kill me if I let my true heart be known. Because you see, I had a secret I dared not tell the world. I had a secret that I never would say out loud because then it would become true. So I kept my secret and I shared it with no one but God whom I would beg every night in my prayers, please, please God, make me like the other boys who like girls. Please God, make me normal. And every morning, my young tortured heart would awaken with my prayers unanswered again. And I felt as though I'd been abandoned by God and left in this world on my own that I was so offensive to him, so offensive to him, that he didn't even try to make me right. And all of this is going on inside the mind of a little boy that's not even 12 years old yet. And I carried this burden alone, unbeknownst to anybody around me, because I couldn't tell them. And this is why even today in the 21st century, the number one cause of death to LGBTQ teens is suicide. They simply can't bear the rejection of a world who doesn't understand them and a God up there who is intent on punishing them. Now, no religion sets out to cause harm and certainly not to small children. In fact, the goal of every religion is the same. It's to unite us with spirit. It's to connect you to the source of love. But you see, like the software on our computers, our religions have to be updated. As more is known about life and science and the universe, we need an expanded awareness a new God for a 21st century woman, a more modern version of God for a 21st century man, one more inclusive, one more loving, and certainly, certainly one more forgiving. 
This is the God I went in search of when that little boy grew up and doubled his age to 24 and still was heartbroken by a God up there intent on destroying him. This is the God I went in search of when I found CSL in Atlanta, Georgia in 1982 and the minister who took the stage that day would later become my teacher and my friend, Dr. Kennedy Schultz. There's a few of you here today who knew him. And Kennedy was not one to mix words and certainly had no fear of offending people with the truth that he spoke. In fact, he told me once, my goodness, it's hardly worth getting up in the morning if you can at least offend one person. <laughs> and on that day, that Sunday morning in 1982, like that woman in the Apple commercial who shattered the screen that everyone was watching, Dr. Schultz took a wrecking ball to my concept of God as a man who loved some and hated others. He said, we have to begin with a new God a new awareness of life, a life that works for all of us and not against us, a deity, a God, a perfect intelligence that works for everybody. He wrote a book called You Are the Power, and in it he wrote this, a God that destroys its own creation would not be perfect but merely insane. Our God must be perfect intelligence that hears no evil sees no evil, does no evil, and justifies no evil. What? What? I was shocked. I was stunned when I heard him say that. Like the drones in the Apple ad, I was literally blown away. My whole world was shattered. Wait, what? You mean there's nobody up there that hates me? You mean there's nobody up there that wants to punish me for being true to my own heart? You mean nothing, nothing I've been told about God is true? How can that be? Everyone believes in a God with personal preferences. Everyone believes that God loves some and hates others. Everybody believes in duality, a heaven for good people and a hell for others. Well, apparently not everyone not the 500 million Buddhists, not the 1.2 billion Hindus, or the 12 million Taoists, or the million or so people that are in our teaching, we're the iconoclasts, we're the rule breakers, the rebels, the nonconformists, we're the ones that trust intuition over institution. We trust our own intelligence over any outdated religious doctrine. Our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes, said we are dealing with intelligence. Shouldn't we deal with it intelligently? You know, most religions don't encourage you to use your own mind. In fact, they'd much prefer you didn't. Because if you applied any reasonable thinking to theology or reality, you'd realize it's absolutely impossible for such a God to exist. We see no evidence of a power struggle in the universe. There's no fickled deity up there who's prone to emotional mood swings and whims. There's only one life, one God, one power, one intelligence, one power, and it's a power for good, and its only, only desire for your life and mine is for you to share in all of its good. Einstein said, we must all decide whether the universe is friendly or not. I'm telling you, the universe is friendly, and it conspires for your greater good. And the power that created the universe and sustains in it did not create anything to oppose itself. That wouldn't be self-creative, it'd be self-destructive. So there is no devil. There is no evil power working against you. No hell for you to go to. Now that might be a problem for you because now what are you going to tell all those people that told you to go to hell? <laughs> I guess you could say, sorry, there is no hell. Any other travel suggestions? <laughs> this has been known for centuries. It isn't new. 14th century Hafez, a poet, 
said, beware of the tiny gods that frightened men create. If the God you've been living with isn't big enough for you, isn't loving enough or kind enough, maybe you need a new God. Maybe it's time for you to step outside the prescribed doctrine of the masses and search your own heart to find out what is true. In his essay on self-reliance, Emerson said, whoso would be a man must be a nonconformist. A greater self-reliance for the divinity in man must work a revolution in our religions. Listen to me. Trust your own heart over what anybody tells you is true. Listen to your own intuition. You know more than what others have taught you. Something in you will guide you to those truths. You don't need me to tell you what it is. And you certainly don't need a religion. There is a divinity already inside man. There is the presence of God inside every woman. Spirit hasn't abandoned you. It's alive within you, guiding you through your heart and your soul and your mind. So pay attention. Pay attention to that urge you have in your heart to love because whomever you love is right for you regardless of what the world says, regardless of what any religion says, and I don't care what the Pope says. Pay attention to your best ideas. They come from the universe to prosper you. Don't follow the beaten down path by the walking zombies, the unconscious masses of people driven by fear. Blaze your own trail. And you'll find a new life. You know, this is the coolest thing about our teaching. We have no doctrine. We don't tell people what to think about God or what to think about anything else. However, we do tell you this. What you think about comes about. What you believe in your heart of hearts and in your mind of minds is true for you will become true for you. In fact, it really does say it is done unto you as you believe. Many years ago, I was teaching a CSL 101 class. CSL 101 is our new member class, which will be offered if you're wanting to be a member at CSL in a couple months. And there was this little old lady in the class. She's about 80. It's interesting how little old ladies are always about 10 years older than you, right? So if you're 80, then she's 90. If you're 90, she's 100. She's a little old lady, right? But she was about 80. And I asked each of the people in the CSL 101 class, you know, the new members, I said, well, how do you find your way to CSL? Because I'm always really curious how people show up here. And the lady said, well, you know what? She says, I've been a member of the Baptist church for 30 years. And I'm thinking to myself, what? <laughs> you know, this is a stretch to go from being a Baptist for 30 years and then coming to CSL. How did that happen? So it drew me in and I said, why did you leave that church? And she said something I'll never forget. She said, a new minister came and they started telling me that I couldn't love some of the people in my life that I love. And they said, if I kept loving them, that I would go to hell too. You see, the God that they were promoting wasn't big enough, wasn't loving enough, to include everyone. So she came here because at CSL, our God is. And so ends the lesson. Every Sunday, we gather together online or in person so that we can find the truth that resonates in our own mind and hearts so that we can connect one heart to another in love. We come here as a community in spiritual practice 
so that we may become more open to that love. Let's close our eyes, be still, and go within now. of the religions of the world are attempts to explain and describe what is undescribable. No matter how much wisdom you have, you will always want more. No matter how much love is in your life, you will always want more because God is love. Not a loving being up there who loves children down here, but love itself. Imagine a world without love. God is love. It's the love alive in your heart. It's the love you feel for those whom you love. It's invisible, but it's there. And it's the only thing that's important. When you don't know what to do, something in you does. Something in you gives you ideas, strength, wisdom to carry on. God is that wisdom. It's not an old wise man up there that delivers to you an answer to a prayer. It lifts its mind up through yours and guides you through the wisdom in your mind. You are connected to it. It has never abandoned you and never will. It's the fabric of your DNA. It designed the formula for your DNA. It breathed its life into your soul. It lives through you and as you. Let's be still and feel its presence and listen to its wisdom. Let's be still and be at one with spirit. That was 60 seconds. The same 60 seconds in the Apple ad. Except you took it and used it differently, didn't you? Instead of watching something that scares you, you turned inward to something that loves you. Don't you feel better now? It's all your choice. And so it is. close our service as we do everything here with prayer and you have an affirmation card and it looks just like mine and it says this will you say it aloud with me please there is one power one life one intelligence in the universe 
Let's know this together. We do not live in a divided universe. There's not a power for good and a power for bad, trying to duke it out. We live in a united universe, a universe, one song, one life, one power, one love, one essence. The universe was created so that it could express itself. The intelligence at the helm of the universe is God, it is spirit, it is love, and its only reason for being is to experience and express itself, and so it wanted to do so in billions and billions of individual ways, unique opportunities for love, and so it created you and me and everyone else. We are all unique individual expressions of God of perfect love. This is our true identity. There is nothing that you can do that can offend your Creator. There is nothing wrong with you. You have been created in the image and likeness of perfection and wholeness. You are the beloved. Walk as though that's true into every room. Bring the presence of God with you. Carry yourself into every relationship, into every meeting, as though love has entered the room. And you will be blessed forevermore. This truth is established in our minds and hearts and becomes so because now we know it is. And so it is. Join us again next time here at CSL and on Facebook live stream, of course, at 10.30 a.m. Eastern. Have a wonderful week. Thank you for watching and thanks for supporting CSL. If you'd like to know more about us, check us out on our website or social media. Blessings.